Hello there! What's going on, everybody? It's Double Critical. We are back. We had a little bit of a break. Uh, and with me is Sean. How you doing, Sean? Doing all right. Another fun, fun day. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, super fun. We've had uh, we've had a couple of interesting things happen um, in, in that uh, we've got a little bit of confirmation that uh, Darth Maul yep, is Maul. coming to uh, Star Wars Legion. And while we normally don't talk about the news... Um, it, since it's not official, I think it's cool to talk about it, you know. Oh, yeah. And especially because he the the way they, uh, like, I, I saw your video, mm -hmm. but they talked about it's Maul and a Sith probe droid. And that's not something I considered when I was thinking about Maul originally. So it's kind of neat. And actually, I was I was actually, when I saw that title, I was like, oh, maybe they're doing an Imperial probe droid. It's just in general, but oh, I know. Oh, like, the, the, yes. The, Viper droids, yeah. Yeah, that would be really. Uh, I thought it was going to be like a yeah. Darth Maul and then a Imperial probe droid, like, right. two separate. No, no, it looks like it's going to come in the same pack. We are also going to be talking about A New Hope today <laughs> because we've been going backwards through the movies and um you know we've been and we we did we did Rogue One, we did Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back and uh today we're going to talk we're going to start off talking about A New Hope. Um there's less about that to talk about. So then yeah. then we'll uh we'll talk we'll transition into a couple of other interesting topics. Um we'll talk uh I've got a few things I want to talk about. But Maul will definitely be one of those. I think that's going to oh, be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Considering he's kind of like our flagship character when we first, our first episode. Because he very well might have surged to double nope. crit, right? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I mean, if he does, if he does, I'm going to sue Fantasy Flight Game. No, no, I'm, not. no I'm not. No, I'm nope. just kidding. I'm, I'm <laughs> totally kidding. Uh, this is not true. I'm absolutely not going to sue anybody. Although, actually, I kind of want to do sue somebody because somebody's using one of my videos in a Oh, stupid Facebook commercial that's going around right now. If I saw you that see Facebook me, post. yes, if you see my face on some company selling Darth Vader helmets, it's I did not oh. authorize that. Um, there's there, there's some like it's not a real company. It's just like it's it's just random uh, random letters and numbers strung together with like a yeah. pretty girl's face as their picture. But they're running ads on Facebook right now. They stole video footage of my Darth Vader helmet unboxing from a couple years ago. Uh, they chopped it up. They're playing music over that. They edited out my audio, uh, and they're and, and it links to their website where they're trying to sell Darth Vader helmets. And I'm sure Ooh. I'm sure it's a scam, you know, because yeah. first off, if you're a legit business, you might have said, "Hey, do you mind if we use your footage, you know, or something like that?" But but no, I, I found out from a couple of uh, well-meaning, awesome, uh, you know, subscribers and, and friends that uh, emailed me, uh, you know, the other day and said, "Hey, man, this is um, this is an ad of you going around. Did you know that?" It That's yeah. And, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna not add to that, but like, uh, actually, my Instagram, I sent out not to not not me, but apparently, <laughs> I sent out a bunch of messages with like a link to something. So if you are a follower on me on Instagram. Please do oh. not click anything. You, I, might need, you might need to update your already, credentials a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right, I've already it did two 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 yep. factor authentication. Yeah. Two factor yeah. is definitely the way to go. Uh, it's it's very important and uh, yeah, it's it's something that I'm having to do on just about everything. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's a pain. The There's a lot of a lot of jerks out there, you know. Yes, a lot of jerks that want to you know do identity theft and stuff. Like I really. You know, I'm not a. I don't know if I'm really in favor of the death penalty, but when somebody does identity theft, it really makes me think about it. Really makes me think about it. Um, so uh, a couple of uh, a couple of admin things also before we get started. Um, is uh, we've got some new masks. Uh, so check the description below. We um, just got a uh, what was it? Uh, the the Sabine mask, the Darth Maul okay. mask. Um, I've Sabine, to, you got the Sabine mask? Sabine? Uh, well, they're not masks. I'm sorry. They're, oh, the, they're, the, they're, the, they're, the, the face you shield. You need Ahsoka or neck. Sabine? Uh, I've got Ahsoka. I, I don't have a Sabine one in hand yet. It just showed oh. up. Or it just showed up. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. You have. You probably haven't even seen them yet. Um, no, like, I haven't. They like, just showed up like, like yesterday. Sabine. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. There's a Sabine one. There's a Darth Maul one. I redid the Darth Vader one so that it's a cor correct thumbnail now. So, you can see the Darth Vader in the front. Of course. And then uh, Ahsoka and uh, Boba Fett. And I'm working on new ones all the time because, um, like, they're really fun. And I think in today's climate, you know, having uh, gator necks is a good idea. And even if we get to the point where we don't have to wear masks anymore or whatever, then 
they're still good to have because they're really good for cold weather or good if you're spray painting stuff outside maybe yes. you know yeah because they're double layered too and that's the cool thing is uh, you the, you know you've you've got it's it's all the way around and there's a whole inside you can, they're reversible um, although like the, like the Ahsoka one's a bad example for a reversible one the, <laughs> the cool thing is the double critical ones are reversible and I actually have you know if you're really really a super fan I don't expect that that many people to buy these though but uh but it's got the little c on the inside oh, C. so so yeah that, they're they're kind of reversible in that aspect too so um <clears throat> i might come up that'd be I, I wonder if there's a really cool ideas that that would like be like for a reversible one like something really cool on the inside oh, like, oh you could do like a light side dark side like uh oh yeah yeah the only thing I can think of is like, like the, or like Spider-Man and Venom. Not, I mean, not yeah, that because that's oh, kind I of off. Spider-Man and Venom would be really cool. That yeah. is, that it'd be a little off-brand for me, but yeah, but, it would. <clears throat> but yeah, like, but something to that effect. Oh, oh, like Darth Revan. Oh, a Tie Fighter, oh, a Tie Fighter uh, cockpit and an X-wing cockpit. That's a cool idea. That's a really cool it's, idea. It's, with squadrons coming out, man, that might work. It's, a, it's not a bad idea. You know, actually, a really, I kind of like. Oh, it's harder to do. As the as the pilot, like almost like the flight suit, the flight mask. Like yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. You know, but for a Tie Fighter pilot, you've got a lot more stuff going on there. But for the X Wing pilot, it's just the face right here, right? So <laughs> it's give someone like a little five o'clock shadow. <laughs> I'll just take a picture of my face and put that on the face shield, so you can go around masquerading as me. And so then then you can oh. use then you can use my likeness in a video because you're wearing you know and and, and post yeah. baloney ads on Facebook. <laughs> <clears throat> and you know what really annoys me? I'm going back to the whole Facebook uh, identity okay. theft thing. I, I submitted like a uh, um, like a, a intellectual property infringement uh, or, or you know selection yeah. on there, and I even linked yeah. to my video, and like I got an email back from Facebook saying, well, there appears to be no co uh, no connection between the link that you sent and the product in this video, and I'm like, it's me, but. Facebook yeah. doesn't let you say anything. You all you can do is select check boxes like, uh. you know, they've stolen my copyright, and like like none of these are exactly accurate you know and it's so it's so frustrating because apparently when somebody just steals your stuff there's nothing you can do you know it's, unless you want to get a lawyer you're, you know that you're in it too that's i mean if it was i can maybe see if like it's just like your hands and like something but like no yeah, if the, you're in it it's, it's my fate they did cut my yeah. logo out uh, which is is one thing but, but that's all that's removing a watermark though that's well, there. Yeah. the other thing is yeah like they zoomed in they cut my, they cropped my logo out which is like you know but my my worry is, it's obviously a scam. It's yeah. obviously a scam. It, they're just gonna take people's money and never ship them anything. Or if they do ship you something, it's gonna be like not the actual product, right? Like cheap, like yeah. really cheap plastic that yeah, breaks. Like super super crappy knockoff, you know, something like that. But but then somebody's gonna see my face at some point, or they're gonna find my channel and be like, "You're that guy that ripped me off." I'm like, "No, they stole my video because they're associating my face with this scam." It's aggravating. It's very that, that's aggravating. Very All right, so a new hope. Let's go ahead and talk a new hope uh, because I don't think there's as much uh, like <sighs> left over after we've talked about Rogue One already, Return of the Jedi, and Empire Strikes Back. I don't think there's a whole lot left over in a new hope to talk that, about that that, that should they have go in Legion. Done too, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is uh, we don't always have to talk about just characters. But it could be all kinds of things, like like yeah. like battlefields, like the Death Star. How about like you know? I would love a, a Death Star hangar bay. Yeah, that was. Yeah, they kind of, they kind of had like that battlefront. It's like having like the different levels is really neat, and having the mm -hmm. things, the objectives to turn off and on. Right. I don't remember if it was when Legion was first coming out, if it was for maybe a role playing game or if it was something for Imperial Assault. But I saw somebody had built a really large, like empty hangar bay. Um, and it was about the size of the Death Star hangar bay that the Millennium Falcon was in, but removed the Millennium Falcon, and they had like like uh, like the shiny black floor. They had like some ladders and like crates and like lots of there was lots of you know opportunities to put right. yeah to put all kinds of you know uh, yeah, what like uh, barrels and and fuel containers and scanning crew light, things like light, light cover things that make it a little bit interesting you know. Yeah, and uh, and and then heavy cover two thing. You can have like a tie, a couple of tie fighters in there, um, and even some side rooms or stuff like that if you want to do also. But like having like the one big uh, hangar bay, it's just a, it's a really cool uh, option. I'd love to have more interior things, but not necessarily as 
as close quarters as some of the stuff we've done with like the LB four twenty seven, which it's, you know, it could be cool, but like there has to be, it has to be like uh, what I think is there has to be like big sections. Yeah. Then you have the small quarters to have like that flanking option in a way. Yes. Oh, I think we should maybe try that again one of these days too, <laughs> because I have I got a Kickstarter shipping notice of um, dungeons and lasers and this was the yeah. interior terrain before i started doing the lv427 stuff i had pledged um for like a dungeons and lasers kickstarter which is from um oh goodness the name escapes me right now but they did the wolfenstein one that i did uh oh, they, they have the really nice minis and stuff um but uh, they're out of poland and yeah, uh, uh, yeah so i'm gonna like i'll, I'll do a whole unboxing and, and review of all that stuff but I, I, sure, yeah. I got a decent amount of that of that terrain i got all the sci-fi themed stuff and the cool thing the cool thing about that is it's a lot more modular and like you can design the room composition and so instead of everything being the specific square size like i can make a bigger rooms or i can make more l-shaped rooms or or things like that um and and so i think it would actually pair well with some of that, so we could have like, well, yeah, like a that. battlefield that's got more big rooms, but then like some small corridors, you know. Yeah. And so, like, I think like that could that could be kind of interesting. It, it, if there was ever a kill team version of Legion, I think a, I think interior would be really good. Like, it really focus mm -hmm. on like uh, really focus on like small tact small squad tactics. I like. I would love. I I love love love. And I think a great way to do that. Um, we we talked about this. Um, I, I was talking to someone about this in uh, the Legion Discord. Oh, okay. And uh, we, it was around the Darth Maul discussion. Uh, we were talking about, you know, and at some point I was saying, you know, it's going to be really, really nice in the future when we have more Jedi, more, more, more heroes. Yeah. Like so many, like uh, I envision a future one day, especially when I'm feeling down, you know, about anything that's going on in the world or, or COVID or, or just feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> And, you know, like losing sight of how amazing life really is, you know. But it's, it's something every once in a while you get down. And so I'll think, like, man, you know what? One day I'm going to be sitting there building a Legion army. And I'm thinking, hmm, which Jedi do I want to bring today? Uh, let's see. i got Kit Fisto. I've got Ki Adi Mundi. I've got Mace Windu. I've got Yoda. I've uh, got uh, you know, I've got um, uh, Barris. Uh, Quinlan uh, Vos. Quinlan Voss, he could be for either side. Yeah, like, like and I'm uh, thinking about, like, all these, um, who was um, Barriss's uh, uh, master? Oh. Luminara Unduli. Yes, there you, you go. Know, Ahsoka Tano. Um, uh, like, there's there's a lot of female Jedi uh, that are really, uh, yeah, 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 Aayla Secura. There's, Whatever the, oh, the, the, the sisters, the, the plant sisters. Yeah, and Depa Balaba, too. I'd love to see Depa Balaba. Oh, that was a uh, um, Kanan's master. Kanan's, yeah, yeah. She was in the prequels too. There was an actual actress that played. She didn't have a speaking role, I don't believe, but but yeah. So, like, there's so many. Like, I, like at one point there would be like, so and somebody suggested, well, what if you just did 800 points of just operatives and commanders? And I'm like, you know what? That sounds like that'd be fun. Like, like I wouldn't mind trying. Maybe we should try that one of these we days. Try that, yeah. I would. I'd be down. Like, I, I think at this it's, point, it's hard to do right now because I well, think at least for like, I don't. You couldn't do it for separatists. Mm, you nope. know, yeah. It had, it had to be Empire versus Rebel right now. Yeah. Like, if there's enough variety that 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 can work, or maybe we blur the lines and allow some cross faction. Like, maybe uh -huh. Dooku and Vader can team up. You know, <laughs> maybe, maybe just just you know, just for experimenting. The union. <laughs> You cut off my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you disappoint me, Lord Vader. You're no, you're more machine than man now. Yeah, uh, um, but no. So like, <laughs> I, I, I'd love to see some some more stuff like that using some smaller battlefields or interior stuff. Like that'd be that'd be really fun. And you got a little bit of that with the Death Star, you know? Or, okay. Or that was actually few versus many, right? Yeah. That was uh, so. That was that, that was, was that, that was more of an RPG. Like let's sneak into the big bad's house and like get something done, kind mm -hmm. of session. But there's other things from A New Hope uh, that I think would be fun, and uh, Ben Kenobi, um, yes. uh, operative. He would have to. I think he would have to be an operative. Although in, you could say he could serve as commander. You could it, because I think Leia. Right. So I'm gonna go back to like, okay. What was Bail Organa's mission for Leia? Right. Go back and get Recruit this Jedi. General. Tell him the rebellion needs him. Gen yeah, yeah. You served my father as a general in the Clone Wars. She wanted him to step in, take charge, help lead a rebellion against the Empire. They are ready to fight. So Obi Wan Kenobi's role 
would have been a as a yeah. general in the rebellion. Um, and so I would love to see like a what if, you know, they're doing these Marvel what ifs. Oh, I want, yeah. I would, yeah, I've heard about those. I would love to see that what if, if they didn't get stuck in the Death Star tractor beam, if they did make it, um, or, or like, let's just assume Alderaan didn't get exploded. Right. Let's say the, the, the Oh, that's a whole new other what if. <laughs> I mean, it, it is. But like, but the point is, I'd love to see what happens if Obi Wan Kenobi becomes a general, in in the Clone Wars, you know, or the like, Civil War. I mean, the Civil. Yep. Yeah. We we already got to see what happened if Obi Wan. Yeah, we got Kenobi. that one. Yeah, in the Clone Wars. Yeah. So like, I I would love to see that. I think though, you may have to call him Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Because the fact that his name is Obi Wan Kenobi. If he is called Obi-Wan Kenobi, he will have access to all of Obi-Wan Kenobi's command cards from clone Obi-Wan Kenobi. Because the only thing that is required is that the name of the character is the same. Yeah. And, and he doesn't seem as energetic. Like, those cards are very energetic. Like, I'm defending, I'm charging, like stuff like that. And Ben yeah. Kenobi doesn't have that vibe to him. Well... A lot of that is purely because he was an old man, and the movie like was made in the seventies, and you know, <laughs> you couldn't be. A... Have you seen like the the scene thirty eight remaster or whatever it's called, where they basically had a a stand in kind of perform like more of an epic duel between Obi Wan and Vader? Yes, I, I, I think the one that I'm thinking of. Yes, yeah, I have seen. It is crazy. It's amazing, and that's kind of if they were to shoot it now, it would have been probably a, a lot more like that because this is the same Vader. Who only moments before went completely crazy at the end of Rogue One, so That's true. <laughs> and you know and uh, and so uh, you know I could definitely see that because re in reality Obi Wan isn't that old. No, right? That's he, true. He, he would have been. <laughs> That's true. Let's let's face it. He would have about been the same age as Ewan McGregor is now. Yeah. At, in that movie, right? So and Ewan McGregor is in fantastic shape. He is excited to play Obi Wan too. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is I I am I am so, so excited to see whatever happens with him. And I and don't I, like backstories as much, but I love Ewan McGregor. Yeah, I, oh yeah. it's well, that's I think with Star Wars, we the characters are such a driving force. You want to you, sometimes to see more of them is just fun. Like you know, that's that's absolutely true. And we need to get over another thing is like we need to get over what's canon, what's not canon, and, and just and just and just enjoy a story. You know, and, yep. I, and 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 you and McGregor it easily puts me in that frame of reference, like where I'm just ready to sit down and, like, all right, take me for a ride. Like, you know, can you hey, can you say hello there when you do it? Could you could you could you just squeak that just in? Say, just say it once. Yep. Could you could you squeeze in some new quips? Because we need more memes. We need more you and McGregor memes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, so no, yeah, like that's a good. Um, and so there's a couple other characters, but I think Ben Kenobi's maybe maybe the single big, biggest takeaway from A New Hope that I'd like to see in Legion. Yeah. Um, he played probably same as somewhere he was in Imperial Assault. And he had a. Operative, like you know, yeah. kind of, like self-sacrificing. I see him having some kind of incognito-related ability, something like that. Or definitely, if he dies, then something cool happens. Maybe he, maybe he's the first character that comes back as a Force ghost. I'm gonna run this on. It's, this is somewhat unrelated and everything, but it's kind of something we, you and I do. We play Rebellion, oh, and yes. Rebellion to me has so many. I would love to do maybe like an RPG or like a maybe a battle scenario where, based off. A rebellion game like we've had games where vader dies and leia becomes like under the under the servant of the em emperor you're bringing or up really hurtful moons because i remember when you did that to me the only <laughs> time that the the emperor is able to convert people to the dark side is when you are playing empire and i am playing rebels when i am playing empire you just you you beat me every time you can contest with just one guy against a, a ten dice roll, and I'll roll all blanks, and you'll be like, "Oh, I guess." Uh, I guess, it doesn't. <laughs> I guess General Dodonna stopped the Emperor single-handedly. You know, and I'm like, "For crying!" Yeah, all right. But anyway, continue. So, so I was saying, like, I would love to do like a uh, more like an RPG session, like based on a what if universe. Hey, if Leia was, you know, maybe she got converted, or if Obi Wan survived and was that general, or things like that. I think it'd be really be kind of cool. Yeah. No. That, I'd love to see more what ifs, and I love discussing it too. It's a, it actually that sounds like that'd be a really cool podcast. Like like talk yeah. about like hey, what if Luke and Leia got swapped at birth? What if Mace Windu um, did they didn't bring? Like that one, didn't they? I don't know. I, I, I there's so many Star Wars content creators out there. I, I mean, there, there probably is, you know. Yeah. But uh, but it's still cool to it's cool, fun to talk yeah. about too. It's really fun to do. Um, 
All right, so I'm going to move on past Obi Wan. Right. <laughs> um, we could use some Imperial commanders. How about Tarkin? Mm, okay, I still see him too much as like a as a uh, fleet kind of guy. Like I don't like yeah. Veers. I can understand because he was like you know he had the, yeah. the AT AT AT, but mm -hmm. Tarkin just uh, I see him. I don't know. It's just weird. I don't see him as a general. Okay, so granted, him in the Clone Wars, he did do some ground stuff. He did ground. Now, granted, I yeah, I definitely expect to see like Captain Tarkin in in in, in at, for a Republic Ooh. at some point. Yeah, that's. I, I definitely expect to see that, but I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Grand Moff Tarkin in in this game. You know, because for, here's why: we've got the Emperor, right? And so if the Emperor can get down and lead a couple of stormtroopers, so can Tarkin. But but also the books, right? Like, um, what would the, did you ever read the Tarkin novel? I did not. Oh, okay. Well, it does <laughs> paint Tarkin. Is is that one canon? I heard. I heard that it was. It is. Like, I think it, it was it one of the. It was one of the first ones. Um, and oh. and so it's it's all about the carrion spike. Um, right, so which is stealth crazy. The stealth ship, ship yeah, yeah. Um, but what's what's interesting about it is it does kind of go into Tarkin's backstory a lot more and does paint him as a, a dude who is a lot tougher than you would expect. Well, so. I think even through like some of like the Thrawn books, I mean like Thrawn and some of the other ones I listed, like he was a lot more not almost like conniving, but like he had the he was very clever about everything he did. Sure. Yeah, so, no, no, he he was he was like there's a there's a lot of similarity between Thrawn and Tarkin. Yeah. But the differences also make them fantastic. But you know, I, I could see Tarkin working very, very well. I think he would be a um, a, a weaker physical commander, but I think he would have really good command cards. And right. That's what I was saying. Well, what, what role would you <clears> have <throat> the battlefield? Because that's hmm. I like because uh, either I see him as a Veer stand-in, or he'd be a Leia counterpart, given Dodge to improve. Like at, I, that's yeah. I, I see him being um, kind of asymmetric to Veers. Okay. Somebody that might actually complement Veers if you ran them both. Um, I don't have. I, I haven't done a whole mock-up idea, but <clears throat> maybe he's somebody who makes aims better. It, okay. a, any aim token spent within range three of him um, it gives you plus one reroll. Right? Um, it's suppression because, like, the whole like in the Tarkin town, like he has a very imposing presence. Sure. Maybe maybe he allows. Uh, X number of troops, like when when a troop activates that in his distance, one of him, it gets to put a suppression on somebody else or something like that. Like you know, but but I, I imagine what I would like for him to fit in the game is if you want to run Veers and you're going for that Imperial officer, like Imperial support type of role, he can be a good second commander that, like he can work independently or he can actually combo with Veers because now if you're running two Imperial officers that are probably in the hundred point range each. Um, now you're now that you've now you've got over 200 points probably invested in your commanders. So instead of having a, a single powerhouse like Vader or Palpatine, right. your powerhouse is like this sphere of influence that's now like a a bigger bubble of goodness to make your stormtroopers more deadly. Yeah. So like that's kind of the role I would like to see him play. Um, and and I just I'd give him just regular kind of like Veer's level, um, maybe even a white defense die because I don't see him wearing. Um, hardened uh, he armor. Was, he was pretty. Uh, <clears throat> he would be arrogant. He was yeah, arrogant. Yeah, exactly arrogant. That's what, yeah. That's exactly what I want to use. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna get away from uh, from the rebels in the Empire a little bit and uh, talk about Mos Eisley since we see a lot of the movie take place there. Uh, there's one pretty pretty significant character that wasn't in any of the other movies, and that's Greedo. <gasps> oh yeah. Yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah. No. So so uh, we see Greedo. Greedo did show up in Imperial Assault. Yeah, um, he, you know, he, was, he was interesting. He had a weird cover mechanic thing. Yeah, he, I'm not sure how. I, I don't think I would copy him directly from Imperial Assault, but uh, but I, I'd like to see. You know, he could be a cheaper operative, um, and and that's one of the things like that R2D2 has shown us that like a cheaper <laughs> operative gives you a kind of a cheap activation. Um, yep. Greedo could be a cheap bounty. That's a, a cheap bounty hunter. That's just not that good. You know, <laughs> that'd be fun. I mean, it'd, be, it'd be an interesting way to play. Like. If he if he gets his bounty, that's great. And then you're gonna like want to hide him away because he's most likely gonna yeah, die. But, but he might die in the course of trying to get there. But hey, you know what? No problem because you were a cheap activation anyway. Yeah. And maybe he's got some clever command cards that you know he could have the McClunky. He could have the McClunky. <laughs> yeah. So anybody who doesn't know what McClunky is on McClunky, and I have some shirts for McClunky too. They. When Disney Plus put Star Wars out uh, finally, and uh, they there was 
the yes. final George Lucas edit to A New Hope, which we hadn't seen until they showed up on Disney Plus, is that right as Greedo dies, he says McClunky, which or it was like why? So unnecessary. <laughs> so unnecessary. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge joke now, but it's not that huge because a lot of people just haven't gone back to watch it again or just don't yeah. care. Mm. Um, um, all right, so we got a lot of aliens in the cantina bar. Yep. There's oh a, yeah. There's a there's a lot of aliens. So and a lot of things like all right, Tusken Raiders and Jawas. I was gonna say Jawas. I was thinking about like what we're talking like Jawas be a neat like. They could be actually. They, they they show they work in squads. They have they have their own vehicles. The Mandalorian kind of made me have a newfound respect for Jawas a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they were so, they were the badasses in that movie. <laughs> <clears throat> they were tough. They were strong in numbers. So you you know. Yep. But I don't know if like I want to have like, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for like a straight up scum and villainy faction to to feature yeah. something like that, or if if Jawas are better off, um, like being maybe a condition. You know, a battlefield condition. There's there's roaming yeah. Jawas, and they just you know maybe you can buy things from them, or you roll a die and they attack you. If you know, or, that'd be cool. Like you yeah. like if you're within range one, like you can. How would you? How would you do that? You you spend a victory point. You loot. You give your opponent a victory point, and then you recruit the Jawas. Oh, oh yeah. I was gonna say like you spend an action. Like you have to use an action. That's like you have in the credits or whatever. Oh, and then they move or something like that. Or, yeah, they, exactly. or they give you a, or they give you a card. Maybe they have their own supply deck or something like that. That would actually Jawas and a, and an upgraded supply deck would be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, no. I and they're they're freaking uh, the sand crawler would be a great centerpiece item, or even like side like side like it's on the side. Side piece, of the yeah. Yeah. Because the the problem with having a big centerpiece is some of the. Um, the uh, some of the objectives have you mark like something in the very center or like oh, yeah. re recover the supplies, right? Wait, so am I going to have this thing like you know th two feet in the air now? Nobody can get it, you know, and that makes that makes things a little tough, especially if I just deploy. Oh, um, you know what? I've got infiltrate. Okay, no problem. I just deployed uh, a pathfinder up there. They're going to claim it, and now I win. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that could that that has that has a little bit of difficulty. Um, but. We also have some cool creatures. Now, a lot of the creatures we see in this movie we've already got, like Dewbacks we've already yeah. got. Um, Sand Yeah, we, uh, so much of the stuff we've already got. But um, what was the thing they added in the special edition? The Bronto? Bronto. The Bronto. Bronto. Yeah. yeah, that would be a kind of a cool Which, one. Which, in the Star Wars Galaxy, Star Wars whatever world in Disney Disney World, yeah. has the Bronto wraps are amazing. I think <laughs> I had one of those. It was uh, it had a lot of stuff in it. It's, yeah. it's like a, it's a, I think it's like a Norwegian. It's got like the, the pita wrap and it's got like yeah. the, yeah, sausage that, and all the stuff. Oh, yeah, it had the sausage in it, and it had like some like um, like some shredded cabbage that was like marinated, yep. and uh, yeah, yeah, and it was that was really good. The, so the Bronto wrap was I, I, I agree with you there. <laughs> um, and so you know, and, and there's there's certainly other rebel generals. If you if you kind of jump to the end scene, there's um, Tadana. There's uh, there's a couple other um, guys that were like, I think Aaron Kraken. Was actually in the background. Uh, there was a there was a couple of other like rebel characters that were like named characters, but only like in the books or in the old decipher card game or something that like had oh, appearances. Yeah. Or like they were in the the like forty fortieth anniversary kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and so like there's 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 all of that stuff, and you know like and that's all fine and good. Or maybe like that. Um, what's that 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 guard that like sees the X wing coming in and he's he's got his like the rebel comms but i mean i feel like that's the rebel comms technician right so yeah that that's what that is or like a it's a yeah sea trooper that's on the ground <laughs> yeah so like i'm like i i feel like we're really kind of scraping you know the bottom of the barrel here trying to come up with more more stuff like that but you do have a lot of rebels oh. in their flight suits I have, I have one i have oh. one okay um imperial torture droid oh because Alphabet Squadron. I will not well, not only Alphabet Squadron, but remember Leia got tortured by. Yeah, yeah exactly. But that's what made you think of it, right? That, that, that too. Yeah, I'm right. good listen to Alphabet yeah. Squadron. So, so anybody <laughs> listening, the second Alphabet Squadron book, Shadowfall. Yeah, Shadowfall. Was, Shadowfall yeah. just came out uh, a few days ago, and so Sean and I are both listening to it. We're neither of us are done with it yet, so we're not going to discuss it. But oh, no. uh, but if you like, you know. It's kind of cool with Star Wars squadrons coming up. I yeah, notice it's, they, they it's mentioned uh, the the out the Vanguard squadron, which is the one that's yeah. in squadrons, has been mentioned already. They, yeah, there's there's Easter eggs for the game, and it's obviously no accident. Or they've obviously planned a lot of this. Which, yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you so, if you are planning on playing Star Wars squadrons and you care about the story or any of that stuff, and I'm definitely going to be doing it. Um, 
then it might, it might be worth a read because Alphabet Squadron is not a terrible set of books so far. They're not yes. they're not my favorite. All of the Star Wars books almost are crap. But uh, and I only say that because I'm, <laughs> I am comparing them to great and amazing literary masterpieces like the Dresden Files and the Expanse and and books that well, just uh, Expanse is that's a, that's books, a hard one books that take me away and just make me filled with glee and then the Star Wars books are just like oh and there's that too okay it's it, it's like having filet mignon and then a Star Wars book is a hot dog. Right, it's kind of like oh, that. It's, a, it's at least like a, a scrap steak with that bacon around it you buy at Walmart. Well, I was going to say, like, may, like hot dogs are sometimes good. You know, oh, that's like, true. Or maybe, and, and some of the good ones, some of the kind of good ones are a bratwurst, right? But yep. there's, every once in a while, there's a great, a great Star Wars book. <laughs> like, Thrawn was great. Yep. And, um, 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 uh, 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 what's the one? Uh, Ooh, the, the Romeo the and Juliet. And Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, stars, something. Lost Stars. Lost Stars. One Lost of the best. Stars. One of the best Star Wars that books of really all good. time. Yeah. Um, it's funny too because that one, like, that one did like backstory stuff, but it was still really intense. It was the thing is sometimes a book is just written so well that it just takes you away, and I feel like a lot of the Star Wars books aren't aren't written that well. They're just written written good enough, almost I like think, they're rushed. Yeah, I think actually I think that's a big thing of that because it seems a lot of them. They're forced to fit a narrative. Like um, the yeah. last one that was the the, the one that was before the Last Jedi, ha- it oh the had- Avengers one, the Star Wars Avengers, yeah. yeah. It had so many like this could have been cool moment, but it just didn't. Yeah, don't didn't forget, you, like yeah, it's like oh I've got to fit all of these bullet points that Disney told me had to fit yeah. in here, so let's make it work, and then yeah. in the effort to do that, you've lost the reader. Like like that's you know again, but. Again, I'm not a really a literary critic, and I'm going to get off of this topic in just a second because, <laughs> you know, you guys are here to talk about Legion and stuff like that. You guys are here to listen about Legion, but, um, you know, like some of these books, like some of the books inspire stuff too. Maybe we should do, you know, book episodes here and there. I don't know. But, uh, do, it, I would actually write the the one that they did for Battlefront, the first book was actually Twilight. Twilight the, yeah, I, that was actually that's, good. That's one of the few I have the physical book of, so I've never done the audio book, and. I am so busy lately. I never want to pick up a physical book lately because anytime I have time to read, I usually also need to paint. So I put on an audio book. But yeah, I have not listened to Twilight Company yet. And I think that would probably be a good one for Legion, wouldn't it? It actually, the, we, I remember it. It was very good for Legion. Like it's nice. the idea of the characters. You know, it's good. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I want to transition. <laughs> I think that's it for New Hope, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, look, any of you guys who are, uh, l- let us know in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, let us know down below. If you are listening, um, l- I'm curious where you're listening from, too, because we are now available in multiple places. We're on Podbean, uh, we've, uh, on Apple Podcasts. We're now on Spotify also. Yep. So I think that's, I think we've covered the major bases there. Um, yep. And that, yeah. yeah, I think that's it. So if you're, you know, uh, if you're not familiar with where we're available, there's, that's where we are available. So if you prefer one over the other, you know, more options, more for you guys, and that's that's what we're doing. Um, let's talk a little bit about Darth Maul. So <laughs> uh, I don't know if everybody wants to talk about Darth Maul because, like, I know some people are definitely talking about him because I found a leak. And uh, it was from Lions Rampart, like uh, basically a distributor. Now I'm going to tell you some cool things because I'm talk- I've been talking about like all different games because I found leaks for all of the games. Dude, there's another Twilight Imperium leak on there. Really? Yes. Yes. Oh gosh. Like, what, like it's hold on. I'm going to pull it up right here in like in a different window <laughs> while I'm talking to you. Yeah. Like there's there's stuff I haven't even talked about to to hardly anybody. Uh, I think it's a separate game though because it's not labeled as expansion. But I thought it was. A, uh, an expansion to Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. I, I thought they were really going to do an RPG source book for Twilight Imperium because they have... Oh, it's, yeah. It's their own It's their own. Uh, well, IP. maybe that's what this is. This is called Twilight Imperium Prophecy of Kings uh, that is up on the Lion Rampant distributor site. Now, here's a cool thing about this distributor site. It's not just a leak from some phony... It's not some phony leak... I come to find out just recently that Lion Rampant is actually owned by Asmodee. <laughs> Asmodee acquired Lion Rampant as a distributor. So, 
well, they're these doing leaks this are com- well. It's the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's <laughs> it's really funny. So Asmodee is actually leaking their own stuff, um, and and so I always complain. One of my standing jokes is, oh, all these other podcasts and stuff get get uh, get spoilers. So I, now I have to go make my own spoilers, right? I have to find my <laughs> own. So so that's what I've been doing. I've been doing some more uh, investigative Mr. journalism. Yeah. yeah. Good journalism. Yeah, we're well, trying. It's fake news. No, uh, it's real, real stuff. So um, yeah, so Twilight Imperium is coming out. But I, yeah, basically um, there was some stuff. Um, there were there, there was some um, new leaks for X Wing. There were new leaks for Armada, uh, yeah. and, and I'm talking about all. I've, I've done videos for all of those, um, but also for for Legion. So the Anakin Skywalker expansion yep. that we already kind of heard about um, is also on there. But in addition to that, Darth Maul and the Sith probe droid. So that's I cool. I forgot he had a probe droid. Like it's been so long since I've seen Phantom Menace. He didn't really do much with it, right? Yeah. It told him so. So first off, there's a couple of things. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here, and I've already, I've, done, I've done a video about it already. But it's you know, the main bullet points are that the fact that it's Darth Maul yep. with Sith probe droid means that it's got to be Episode One Maul. Yeah. Uh, so like some people are like, was it going to be Clone Wars Maul? Is it going to be Robot Legs Maul? Probably not this version. It also says that it's an operative expansion. Now, when I think of Clone Wars Maul, I think of a commander. I do too. Yeah. And especially leading all the Mandalorians, and then yeah. like eventually to his crime on syndicate, like him yeah. and his brother leading the Night Sisters. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I also uh, I think that this means we're getting double bladed saber maul. I think we're getting you know regular legs. We'll probably get. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a hooded. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, this is the regular light spread. This guy threw me off. Regular I know he has robot legs. Well, he sounds right. like it's it's such a generic way to describe it. like regular legs guy. I I will Not also. Legs. I'm going to go out on a couple of limbs here as far as the sculpt of the model itself. Ooh. I'm going to guess a that he joins together from the waist to the to the to the legs because sometimes you get like that whole front right. Yeah. But I think they're going to give him separate legs. So 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 when people can can magnetize them. And you know, have the the top, you know, the top come off. Um, yeah. I think that'd be funny. Um, but also, I'm gonna say that they will probably give him a hooded option and a non-hooded option. Uh, All depending so on. I know. saw saw that in your video, and mm-hmm. I don't. <clears throat> so I'm thinking logistics of the sculpting wise. A hooded option would be. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? Okay, yeah, right. You're right. It'd be a wholly totally different head. You it'd know, be a like, different head, and it'd, yeah. be, it, it'd probably be two pieces. It'd be like the head piece, and then. An extension to go on the back that of like of to ch- to kind of overwrite the other version of the head that would have like the clumped up hood in the back or something like that. Maybe it's because the way the horns are, I think it's gonna be hard to make a uh, a hood that goes over it. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it would be, be a whole different head. It has like the, it has like it just cut off right there, so you see no horns. Well, because actually, it's not the hood just doesn't just go straight back. It was actually he took off the whole cloak, so they may have. You know, like, it, it, there may even be a whole cloak option. I, I don't think so, though. I think they'll just go with, like, hit, fight mode with him and it's just yeah. his black robes. And most, but it, I, I see him doing, like, the, the fist out pose with the double lightsabers, exp, like, ex, expanded. I want him with his one hand, with the double lightsaber behind him. And, the, and then, the, the like, the palm, the, the force using or the other palm, like, in front. And I want, I, I yeah. kind of want that, like, with him, like, a very dynamic, like, one leg down, the other leg bent. And him, like, almost jumping, you know. I, that's that. Yeah, that's they fine. Really, yeah, they could really go into dynamic poses with him because he was. I mean, Ray Park was such a. Yeah. Oh, he's amazing. Say. He's still amazing. He. I yeah. follow him on Twitter, and he like he posts like, he. I think he's got an endorsement from Vader's Vault or one of the saber companies because he's like posting himself doing lightsaber shenanigans, almost daily, and and it's cool to he watch. Knows the <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is. He is the man. He is incredible. So. so and then for the the probe droid, like I know you talk again, you talked about this in your video, but like, mm-hmm. I I see it, I see it more. It's weird because it's so small that I don't see it being a significant like a combat unit, right? But like an observation, but like you don't want to make that a counterpart because it it was never really near him. It was always far away. It it really it depends like, on yeah. Now, I, I guess that's the really the big question, right? Is counterpart or separate unit? Yeah, and, At, like detachment or counterpart, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, um, yeah, or it, it could be another, it could be a completely separate unit. Yeah, and that's it, true. It, it might not have to be detached. 
it makes a little more sense if it's detachment because it started next to him. When he landed on the planet, he he's like he like he programmed. He's like, all right, go. You know, boom. So it started from his location and it sought out Qui Gon and then told him how to ambush him. What about this detachment enemy core unit? Like you you detach it near a core unit, but it's small, so you can't target it. But in like that way, it follows a unit around, kind of. Man, that would be tough. Like, how do you how do you get it? Right? Like, maybe you have to melee it. I guess, yeah. That would be real. That would be, that would be nuts. I, I, I have a feeling it's yeah, going to that's, be. That's, yeah, thinking like the idea that following someone around is what I was going with. Yeah, I, that would be kind of weird. I think it's gonna kind of have what R two D two has in that hole. If it's got a suppression, nobody can nobody can target it as long as they could target somebody else. Um, or it might not even require the suppression for that. It might be like, you can never target this unless it's your only target. Yeah, like it may have that. Um, and this is if it's a standalone unit. Um, and and of course I expect it to be speed three hover ground something like that you know have something like like if you if it's with Vera and then range one of this you gain an aim token for whatever target you shoot at yeah it's gonna have to like it's action it's gonna have to have a special action that like marks a target right like it's, an X wing term give you a target lock on somebody yeah it's it's weird because like I mean we've talked about once before like um, visibility like you want units that are very iconic so that way you draw people in. And, like, the Sith Prodra is not one of those ones I would have thought about. No, so like, I think that's why they're putting it with Darth Maul, because, like, people wouldn't buy it by itself. Well, I mean, that's, well, that's the diehard cool. fans absolutely would. Like, you know, you yeah. and I, you know, we, it, well, you're not playing Separatists, so you might not. But, I mean, I would anyway. Um, but, but yeah, it, it, a lot of stuff, and because a lot of people are saying, well, why should Darth Maul be Separatist? I'm like, well, where else are you going to put him right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, there's He's nowhere else right separate. now for him to go. Yeah, the, the only way you would not have him as separatist was if you had another no faction of like Mandalorian and Death Watch. Or yes, but that and, wouldn't be uh, Darth Maul. That would be exactly. Maul. Or, or actually, I mean, like, did he go by Darth in the Clone Wars? Now I'm trying to think of it. I think he does one by Maul. Yeah, like, well, I the first time I remember hearing him specify that it's just Maul was in Star Wars Rebels. Huh, maybe. Yeah, so he might have gone... Now, now I'm sure I'm sure people are going to mention. let us know in the comments because yeah. I don't have it open in front of me. It's, it's one of those things that, like, I just don't think about until until I do. And then I'm like, oh, now I don't remember, you know? It's it's like it's like somebody says, don't think of an apple. And now all of a sudden you're thinking of an apple, you know? And, but it's the opposite of that, you know? Gosh, now I'm thinking of an apple. Yeah. Uh, um, so, man, I'm thinking because, like, uh, when, he, like, when he recruited Savage or Press... Mm -hmm. I swear he was just going by Maul by then. I don't think it was Darth anymore. He, he, he might have done a little bit of both, you know. Like I, I, I'll be listening for that next time I go back through Clone Wars. I'm still like in the middle of a rewatch right now. But oh, woo! Sorry about that. <laughs> Everybody's gonna yawn now. Um, okay, so the probe droid. You know, I'm, I'm much less excited about the probe droid. I expect Maul to be expensive though, um, because in my opinion, yeah, episode, Jedi usually are. Yeah, Episode okay. One Maul. Episode one Maul might have been, from a certain point of view, might have been peak Maul. Might have been peak because again, there's the whole thing. Darth Vader. Yes, I can see that. Darth Vader could never use Force lightning because his body was half mechanic. He he had such a traumatic injury. He lost so much of his connection with the Force. Well, Maul lost half of his body, right? Yeah. And so you could certainly make the case that when was he at his best? It probably. And Phantom Menace. I mean, he beat Qui Gon, and yeah. Qui Gon. I mean, you've Listen. heard Dave Filoni talk about it. Like, like Qui Gon was like some. There's people that say Qui Gon may have been one of the best Jedi they had, and so you know, and and but then but why did he lose to Obi Wan? Well, all right, he, maybe he was spent. Right, he just fought like a you know one of the strongest Jedi or one. Yeah, and Obi-Wan's picking off the kill after after Qui-Gon is like, you know, trying to stop well, it the whole time. Obi-Wan also kind of, I I think, I believe Obi-Wan tapped into the dark side. Oh, for sure. That yeah. was conflict, you know, seeing your master die, you yeah. get angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So so Obi-Wan Obi -Wan pulled on a little, you know, a little overdrive power on an enemy that was already <laughs> already weakened and exhausted. All right. Um, so, so that's then you know that's like if we're doing it RPG terms there. But I think this is, could be a very expensive mall, and I think by the time you get like older commander mall, that maybe he'll be a little cheaper, but maybe have you know more of a Less. leadership role. 
right? But this he guy critical when he's in his commander form, but as operative. Yeah, no, like this dude, uh, I, I I could see, but I could also see Maul being a little bit of a glass cannon, like comes in and does incredible damage potential, but maybe he's not as survivable as other Jedi. Yeah, maybe he's only got five health. You know. Yeah, five health. I mean, still has reflect. Um, deflect. Yeah, I mean, you probably have to give him deflect. Yeah. Uh, but maybe he doesn't have uh, like the master of the like. At a certain point, you know, like right now, we kind of look at most Jedi, and there's certain things we assume they're all going to have deflect. Yeah. Some almost some kind of master of the force in most of the cases. I can understand why the first Luke Skywalker doesn't have it. Right, it, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but like so, not all Padawans would have something like Master of the Force. But full blown Jedi Knights and above should generally have at least Master of the Force one and deflect and uh, and Force upgrades and you know and, and things and jump and things yeah. like that, right? Like I, was, I can see him having Master of the Force one, but have maybe more train slots. He seems to be like you know physically physically trained better. Oh, I see him having training. Um, I see him being speed two with jump one. Uh, you know, like there's a lot of that that stuff you kind of expect, but I think he's gonna have uh, like at least one new type of Sith assassin keyword or something like that. Um, but I'm also curious. Uh, I was talking to somebody. I think his weapon won't be this giant, you know, like double bladed saber. I mean, it will physically look like that, but I don't think we're gonna see twice as many dice. What hmm. I think will because because the thing or, is, if, if, you are small. Yeah, that's that's where I'm going with it. Oh, because, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, no, because if you if you give him like ten dice in his dice pool, because this is a super long double bladed blade, well, then you give him saber throw, and now all of a sudden you've got a huge oh. damage pool, right? So if you just give him a smaller damage pool, but let him attack twice, like top and bottom, right? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, and and if oh and man, it, I didn't even think about that, would be scary. <laughs> yeah, but but also combine that with his one pip, uh, which. Most of the Jedi's one pip give them some kind. Of, a lot of one pips for combat-oriented characters give them some way to attack again. Yep. So if he's got barrage, Sandy. if yeah. he's if he's got barrage or something like that, um, then uh, I would love to see him have something like Jin's one pip where he can interrupt. He would be a one to do it too. He would be. He's an assassin. He's a Sith assassin, and uh, and and so he should be. He should be playing that role. He should be. An assassin in this game. Woo! It's exciting. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe he gets a incognito for a turn or something like that. As like maybe he's two, three or two pip. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. I don't know. It's just that they, like he's like he's sneaking around. So he, he was, can't. yeah. No, that like that it does make some sense. Almost like him hiding in the shadows. Yeah, you that could like, even call it that. Yeah, exactly. In the into the hmm. in the shadows. Because he and it's. The, what is this only spoken line? At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. So he, his only spoken line is talking about revealing himself finally. So he's been hiding all this time. So maybe, or maybe, or maybe, maybe infiltrate. Actually, infiltrate. Yeah. Might, infiltrate might work for him. I'm definitely. Yeah, the thing it definitely would. Mm -hmm. It. I think it's. I think it's going to cause some growing pain issues because, like, I've had to learn how to deal with infiltrate as pathfinders. And people tend to see those as a weaker unit. They might people might initially see that as a as a setback rather than an advantage. Yeah, but that's I mean, and, he, and it should have a learning curve. It yeah. certainly should. If if you want to put yeah, him yeah, actually to be good, yeah, that it's it's more fun for the game. If you want to put him all the way up front, then go for it. But I'm excited. Like I, I CIS was never going to be like my prime faction, but uh, but now that we've got Maul coming, I am really anxious to run. Yeah. Like, because I'll be able to run Dooku, Maul, and Grievous. I can run three lightsaber wielders in one. Uh -huh. Oh, they're operative. That's right. Maul's an operative. Yes. So. You have, like, three B1s and that's it. <laughs> and you can. No, but, and the beauty of that is you can fit quite a. I mean, the B1s wouldn't have any upgrades, right? They would just yeah. be objective hunters. But you could do it. You give one of them HQ uplink, you know, for those, for all the, you know, the, the operative cards and, you know. Man, I get, actually, it, that, that's a big, it's interesting list because that's such a three big threats like that. Your command cards would be crazy. Like, I, granted, we don't well, know like, what his command cards are going to be, but yeah, I think you can probably knock out General Grievous's for the most part. Besides his one, his one, oh, pip. Oh, be competition for all those one pips. It would be um, Grievous's yeah. one pip is probably one of the best ones. Um, it, well, and Dooku's, it be. Dooku's two pip 
is is incredible. Yeah. Um, so, I, but but no, Grievous is one because if you do that, here's the thing: if you run all three, right? You know the the, the Sith list or whatever, um, you're gonna have very few activations. So you're gonna really need Grievous as one pip because he attacks everybody at range one. That's right? true. So he's gonna give you a lot of attacks. You're gonna need that because you're not gonna have the firepower to take down that many units. Um, so I think uh, you know, and because you have three really deadly threats in this kind of list, you're in a position where um, Grievous might not get killed. Because if people are like, oh man, I've got to shoot Maul. I got Maul coming from this way. Oh, but I've got to shoot Dooku because Dooku's gonna, you know, totally shut me down. You know, so it's like it's, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, it's it's an inside joke of ours, but you know, concentrated fire kills anything. Oh, it does. <laughs> like, it, well, like, except for Jin Urso. Hey, hey, it's overlapping concentrated fire after five turns. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I would love to see from Maul, because of because of his faction. Is something kind of like Leia's, uh, I want to say her three pip, um, where it's uh, where, where she activates and someone else activates. Yes, like where where, where basically where Maul is going to give you the option to have two characters activate back to back. Yeah, I feel like that would be because the double the fall list is very popular. It was for a while because you had Grievous and Dooku, two re like the first list that could run two lightsaber wielding characters. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess technically you had Luke and Sabine too, but um, all right. Does but dark saber. Hmm? <laughs> does the dark saber count as a lightsaber? Yeah, it Actually, it does. It does. So, so yeah. All right, but 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 still, you know. So Dooku and, and 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 Grievous were great because like, but one of the key aspects of that was making the most out of that Dooku and Grievous activation at the right time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like because they're so strong, when you get to do what you need to do with them, they're really strong. So. Being able to do two back to back would really make up if, because at a certain point you pro you you might be running a six activation list depending on point costs, you know. Yeah, so if, if man if they do them back to back, that way you could maybe save you know get them in melee to save them from being shot all the time, or at least you know make yeah. that a hard choice for the exactly. opponent. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that would, that would if again we're going for lower activation. The problem is in a high if you do just do just Darth Maul. Maul that could be incredibly strong, like with a, with an a, with an AAT or like a, a B. I mean, no, actually, no, I like it. No, that's good. Never mind. Yeah, no, I, like, there's there's no. a lot. There's going to be more and more options as more things become available. So it's it's it, it was a we had a tough time when when rebels and imperials had so few, and we're like, oh, we got Boba Fett, we got our first operative. Well, let's try, you hmm. know, and you know, like we never really found the sweet spot there, you know. So at least with him, you know, but especially with Bosk coming out and having that range four, it's you know, so. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting, but I can't wait because Darth Maul like so much of the game for me is about the fun factor, um, yep. more so than the pure competitive aspect of it. You know, it's why I like don't run Tauntauns generally and <laughs> and and certain things that are seen as very very good. I try to shy away from as much. Um, oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever run a Tauntaun. No, you have. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? I, well, I I have no memory of it right now. I think it was like once. <laughs> Maybe uh, it might have been. You know what? We I think we did play test the Tauntauns a, a long we time did, ago. But I, I yeah. think I was still Rebels. I think I was at that, that we, time. We I'm might still... have done Mirror Matches. I I, I don't know, but uh, because that was that, that was a long time ago. But uh, but yeah, uh -huh. I think I don't think I've run them. You know, in, in, in since they've come out. Um, I, but then again, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I swear you done one at least one bat rep with them. I swear at least just one, just once. Well, who, if you guys, if you guys, know, if, anybody who's listening, if you if you've ever seen me use a tauntaun, let me know because I, I I can't remember ever doing it. But uh, but yeah, um, well, I think that's gonna. I think that's all we got to talk about for today. Yeah. All right. Well, um, dude, thanks for you know, sitting down and. Uh, well, anytime. Yeah. yeah have <laughs> have, uh, have a good time over the next couple of weeks, man. Um, we got to get another game in one of these weeks. Yep. Um, Hopefully, I will be need a. I think I want to play my clones. Like I still have to try to find phase twos. I know I'm, oh. I know I know a uh, person come on the video talk about the place in uh, Tampa. I probably have to order from them. <laughs> you know what else? I thought of something else too. Like, cause I don't think I want to keep going. Like, you know, like next episode, I'm not gonna do. I don't think we should do episode three or something like that. Um, you know, like, I wouldn't mind talking a little bit about some stuff that's in between um, before we get into the prequel trilogy. Like, I wouldn't mind talking about Star Wars Rebels. Or the Clone Wars, or you know some of the animated stuff. Um, I mean, I, you know, we could we could certainly talk about that. And there's a lot of different interesting topics to talk about and speculate. There's cool terrain options. So 
yeah. I, I mean, mean we've talked about terrain before, but I mean, there's new terrain coming out all the time. I just had a cool interview with some cool actually, terrain stuff, and that'd be a cool video, like saying like, hey. You know, you know, of the movies, which one do you think has the best? You know, has the best terrain options for Legion? Yeah, yeah. And we can definitely do that. Yeah, that because there's a there's a few I still wish I would see. I could like off the bat right now. Like I want to see a Yavin Temple base. Like that would that oh. was one of my favorite maps in Battlefront. Like is this the Masasi cool, like, the Masasi temples? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just mm-hmm. such a cool like old feel, but then you have all the blaster fire going on, things like yeah. that. No, that that is cool. I, I think it would be really pretty to see, but it'd be harder to play on would be a Camino. I know some people are working on stuff like that. I've heard I've heard people doing it, but like that that that'd be amazing. I think one thing that's gonna make Battlefield uh, choices a lot more interesting is once more Mandalorians come out and hopefully Clan Ren kind of jump starts this. Yeah. Uh, and the ARC troopers and we got more jetpacks and more more flying units. I want to see, you know, more dynamic stuff like this city terrain that uh, that I've been, you know, that I've been talking about Hopefully, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the you know, I would love to be jumping from rooftop to rooftop with like Mandalorians jump, you know, chasing down Jedi and, and things like that. And, and and Cad Bane has jumped too. He's got the rocket feet, right? Yep. So there, I think there should be like a, still like a, like a, for a, like a movement for troopers. Like, hey, if you do, you know, it's kind of like scale. I don't. know, It's pretty weird. How would you do that for like normal troopers? For normal troopers, you'd have to get well the rocket. Um, the rockets, I know at least in in the case of like the arcs, like I believe that's an upgrade. And so I, I don't have it in front of me right now because I, I know it can go on. Yeah. I think it can go on arcs and it can go on wrecks and and stuff like that. But uh, but again, all it takes is an upgrade or command cards or something, or maybe for just for funsies, you you come up with a, a you know a custom scenario oh, like, where everybody like, has clam- a jump pack. Yeah, or like you say, hey, or if you you make this jump, you get to clamber. <laughs> Maybe one or, falls yeah, down. maybe you give everybody a jump pack, you know, like 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 I, that would be a really cool custom scenario, and that counts as your battlefield condition, right? That's Everybody's true. got a jump pack, and and everybody gets jump one. There's a there's a video game called Tribes where I think everyone had jump packs or something. Like I that. loved, dude. That was the first uh, first person shooter that I played a lot. Like I loved so Star Siege Tribes, man. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. I actually haven't played it, but I remember, I remember it. <laughs> it was you skied. You had to jump, and like, and you could like, hit, if you hit a downward hill at just the right angle, you would kind of ski down the hill. And then there was like a whole physics to it, where when you then when you you let your jump jetpack recharge, so that it, at the bottom of the hill, so that you you launch yourself back up, and so you keep your momentum going. Wow. Ah, oh, yeah, I had fun with that. <laughs> I was deployed to Saudi Arabia. Uh, when we had like almost every fun website blocked, and so I couldn't play online games when I was there for six months yep. or something like that, and uh. so but I had my copy of Tribes and I had a map editor, and so for a lot of that time I was just designing maps and I made the Thundercats lair out of oh. out of just random little pieces and start and, and it was like a thousand pieces so it took forever to load, um, but yeah I, I I loved that game. It- I remember, like, I tried to do something. Like, I think it was. I like, know, oh, I tried to download Civilization in Afghanistan, mm-hmm. and it literally. I left my computer alone for like four weeks, and it didn't download. It got like the ninety nine percent. Oh. But, but I just let my computer sit there for four weeks to download something. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I would have cried. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's good times. All right. The well, limits uh, are weird. <laughs> they they are weird. All right, guys. Well, uh, join us soon. Another thing that might be cool is we've got a an RPG coming, a Star Wars RPG mm-hmm. coming up, um, and yeah. and I think it might be cool to kind of like maybe talk a little bit about like how that's been going during like as like a segment on these podcasts. Oh, I you know, love, I mean, I, yeah. you know me, I, I love the RPG. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that'd be a really fun thing to talk about because I think the RPG and Legion have a lot of. Um, they're they're under the same umbrella in in that you can use miniatures and there's a lot of concepts that kind of cross over for for them, oh, yeah. you know. And so like I'm curious if if you guys listening, if you guys would be interested in like a, a little section where we talk about our RPG, um, because I will actually be GMing this and it's my first time trying to GM, so it's so it'll be it'll be interesting. But uh, all right, well uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, thanks Sean for hanging out with us. And we will be back at you in approximately two weeks. Give two, or take. Two to three, yeah. <laughs> uh, so stay tuned, and I will talk to you later. Thank you so much, and as always, have a great day.